Hello, everybody, and thanks for plugging in for this exciting, uh, oh, I'm trying to make it exciting, presentation on, on record keeping. Um, we're, you know, wrapping up our, our series here on with the one hour sessions on what topics that we felt like were critical issues for farmers in terms of compliance with third party audits and uh, and FISMA. And so record keeping is one of those issues that that we see uh, growers struggling with for compliance. And so oftentimes we hear this from from growers, right? I didn't get into farming because of the paperwork. Um, and right, it's you have to stop in the middle of the day or the middle of the activity to, to do this. Um, it, it takes a lot of thought to, to get it right, but but we're dealing more and more with paperwork being a requirement, right? Different agencies in the state and then buyer requirements and now the FISMA produce safety rule. So we wanted to spend some time talking about different ways that we see people using uh, different platforms and uh, some best practices for record keeping. And hopefully you'll be able to leave this session today with one or two maybe new ideas uh, to implement to make to make it a little bit easier for you. For the on-farm readiness review uh, survey results, we, we recently took a, a deeper look at record keeping um, and, and what people were seeing when they went out on farms and did the on-farm readiness review in regards to the different areas of the rule that require records. And so you can see here, that a chunk of farms that had readiness reviews where health and hygiene uh, questions were asked had issues with the records. Most cases it was incomplete records, so they weren't exactly what they expected to see during an inspection. Uh, but in many cases, particularly on farms where they didn't have uh, third party audit requirements, they weren't keeping records for, for worker health and hygiene training. So especially for those types of operations, produce safety, record keeping was, was a newer concept and farms were having to to build this infrastructure to support that that need. But we also see deficiencies with the pre harvest worker training records uh, record keeping when it comes to cleaning and sanitation um, and in both in harvest and post harvest. So it's really kind of across the board, uh, different areas of, of production that we saw issues with record keeping. And when we looked at the, the farms that were having these issues, it didn't matter their produce sales range, right? So with FISMA, they categorize the size of a farm based on how much produce they sell in an average uh, three-year period. And so we saw this for farms that were technically excluded from the rule, as well as, as farms that were selling more than half a million dollars worth of produce in, in the average year. So this is a need that we see even on farms that are that are audited, farms that have had audits for several years and had you'd assume would have record keeping down, but there were there were issues there too. So one of the things that we do spend time talking about in terms of records and produce safety is right is the act of record keeping really reducing risk within your farm operation. And so while the act of record keeping isn't, it's kind of a it's it's a hoop that you jump through to be able to show that you're taking the steps to reduce risk within your operation. Um, it indicates that there's a process, right? So to evaluate is, is this risky? And then um, what are we going to do next, right? So that there's a process in place to reduce that risk. It shows that you have follow through with that process and with records, and we'll talk more about corrective actions, right? Your record keeping is a way to prove that corrective actions happened and this is something that an auditor and an inspector is really going to to look to to see within your records um, to have conversations with you about right so we all know that that things don't always run smoothly on a farm on a regular basis you're going to be tweaking things because a corrective action was needed um, and by writing that down it's proof that that action took place and so one thing that we do hear a lot from from inspectors or regulators in general is if you didn't write it down, it didn't happen. And so records are really the core of, of being able to prove that you took appropriate steps when necessary. So being a farmer in New Jersey can lead to you having to keep a lot of different records for different agencies. So third party audits, produce safety rule, right? DEP for pesticide control. 
if you're certified organic, right, there's a lot of record keeping that goes into that, as well as Department of Labor, Department of Health, taxation. So today we're really focused on produce safety records. But the idea is, is that maybe for some of these other agencies, you're keeping records that were that fit into your produce safety records needs, right? Or you don't want to duplicate anything if you don't have to. So thinking about the whole farm and then what you need to do for, for produce safety. So I know some of many of you have been through um, our third party audit trainings over the years. And so these words are all probably familiar to you. Um, and so we always start the process of determining risks on a farm by conducting a risk assessment for a particular area. Um, and on our on our website, we have more information about conducting risk assessments, right? But your risk assessment is figuring out where are the risks on my farm and what is the likelihood of those risks, one, happening, and two, making people sick. Based on those risks that are identified and their likelihood of happening and causing illness, that's when you develop your policies. So how do you expect things to be done at the farm? And, you know, so this is sort of specific ways that you're reducing risk because of what you've identified. Often those policies are what dictate the records that you keep. So there's an even flow here from risk assessment to your farm policies, to the records that are kept. And within all of that, within those written policies, you're going to indicate the correct corrective actions that should be made once those risks are identified um, and ideally keeping records of those of those corrective actions and through time right if you're starting up your operation you do your initial risk assessment once you do an annual review of your records that's going to inform your risk assessment did things happen that you weren't expecting like what risks popped up that that you didn't foresee when you were back writing those risk assessments. And so that's going to change your risk assessments. That's going to change your policies. And that might change the records that, that you're keeping. So on our on our website, we have a document. It's You could see it there on the page that focuses on the risk assessments that are needed uh, for third party audits, typically. And so we ask certain questions within each one of those risk assessments to make sure that we're looking at all the things we need to look at for that particular area of the farm. And so on this on this work or this this sheet here, we have the land use history assessment, the water system risk assessment, animal activity in and around production areas, soil amendments. So you can see we're focusing on certain areas of the operation which we typically see human pathogen risk associated with. And so some questions that you would want to ask about these so for example that the water system right you're going to when you develop your risk assessment you're going to think about what is the water source testing history have you tested that water in the past how how did those results change over time uh, that from that time period that you've been doing the testing thinking about the potential physical chemical and biological hazards that are impacting that so would we have a different risk assessment for surface water because there's more risks associated with that than if you're doing a risk assessment for a well. Also want to think about potential hazards from sources off of the farm, how they might impact that water source. The hazard control procedures already in place because you, I'm sure you're already doing good things in terms of reducing risk. Sometimes we don't think about it as reducing produce safety risks, but things you're already doing, check off boxes on the produce safety end of things too. Um, and then thinking too about pesticide applications, water that you're using to, to mix chemicals, making sure that that's part of, part of this risk assessment too, because we care about the quality of that water. So you could see there's, there's a thought process that goes behind these, these risk assessments, which are the foundation of, of a food safety plan. Um, but also leading into those your farm's policies and, and record keeping that you're going to have. So in terms of thinking about, you know, planning for for your record keeping. So if if you've never if you're, if you're at the beginning of a farm operation and you 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 have the luxury of thinking about this now rather than, say, a few years in when you haven't been keeping records. Um, right. You're able to plan a little bit better and and maybe set up the system so uh, you don't have to tweak it as much. Um, 
So thinking about what records must you keep? So what agencies, what buyers are requiring you to keep certain records? Um, thinking about what additional records that, that you need to keep. Um, so these might be things that maybe you're not required to, but but in your gut, you know that, that these are records that will help you sleep better at night. So thinking beyond the scope of FISMA or an audit um, or, or any other um, regulatory requirements that you might have, um, are there additional records that would be helpful to you? Um, who at the farm has the capacity to keep these records, right? Record keeping across the whole farm shouldn't fall on one person unless it's a farm operation that is that is one person. And I feel sorry for that person. And we often hear from situations like that, um, the, the frustration that comes with the amount of record keeping and being a one, one man or woman, woman show. Uh, but we also see record keeping um, falling to to the women at the farm. And so I'm speaking to the men here, you know, don't just automatically shunt record keeping to a female at your farm. So not the wife, the girlfriend, the daughter, right? I mean, record keeping should be done across the board by leaders at the farm. So from from the owner of the operation down to, you know, your harvest crew leader. And so everybody can can play an important role in, in record keeping. And in all honesty, if it's spread out across the system, that just makes more sense and is going to lead to better record keeping for you than rather than expecting one person to, to do it all because they can't be everywhere where these records need to be um, need to be uh, kept at different times during during the day. And so because we're spreading this out, we need to make sure that we're training people who are keeping those records appropriately. They need to understand the importance of the records, so the why behind uh, the, the taking the time to write certain details down. Um, and, and then thinking too, all the other workers who maybe not be, they might not be the ones that are writing the, the record themselves, right? They might not be inputting data uh, but they need to know the value of those records also. And, and what happens when the person who's delegated to do the task, that, that particular record keeping task, if they're, if they're sick or they go on vacation, right? People need to be trained as a backup because you don't want there to be a gap in your record keeping because someone went away. Um, so making sure that everybody at the farm knows the importance of the records um, is, is important. Um, thinking about how often documentation will be needed, right? So your water system inspection is something that happens once a year. If you have a third party audit, your mock audit is something that happens once a year. So your record keeping for that might look different than a, a task that's completed on a more frequent basis. So your pre-harvest risk assessment, right? Assessing the field before harvest, that's something that's gonna happen at least once a day when harvest is happening, maybe multiple times, depending on, on your operation. Or record keeping of, of dump tank water where, where sanitizers are used, right? There's certain things that are need to be monitored regularly. So there's gonna be much higher frequency in, in record keeping. And so that's gonna impact what that, what that record keeping assignment looks like for that person. Um, you also have to have a plan for monitoring the records that are kept. It's not just enough that that the that the information is written down at that time. Um, it's you know it's important information. It lets you know if things are working properly at the farm. It lets you know if a corrective action is needed, um, or maybe where you need an infrastructure change or a policy change. Right? These records are going to give you a lot of information um, that's going to support your decision making at the farm. And so also and we'll, we'll show later, right? It, it is a requirement with FISMA um, and third-party audits that, that a supervisor takes a look at these records and signs off on them uh, within a reasonable amount of time of that record being completed. And so that monitoring is, is part of that. If you're using uh, clipboards or other types of, of tools for paper record keeping, um, it's important that that the, that that's that act, that activity is is supported. Um, we've had farms where workers stop filling out the records because they get to the bottom of the page, right? They don't know who to go to to ask for for backup supplies. Um, so clearly, training was lacking in that situation. So making sure that they have 
multiple copies of the record. They know what to do when those copies are gone. They know what to do when the record, that sheet is complete, um, right? There's, there's a whole process involved to making sure that those records are useful and then appropriate and available for you when you're going through a review process with an auditor or an inspector. Um, right, and so back to that fact finding. So if you're taking the time, right, if you need to keep these records to keep a buyer happy or, or audits, um, or, or FISMA inspection, get the most use that you can out of them. Really think about the data that's being captured and how is that gonna inform decisions that, that you make. So when we're doing audit trainings, we get this question a lot, right? What, what, what counts as a record? Um, and so when we think of records, we're often thinking of that clipboard with a chart on it where the date, the name of the person, the activity that was done and, and a signature is, is found. So that's the classic record form. But your lab analysis reports count as records, right? That's a report of, of the water, your, your water source. Um, and so that counts. Product labels can count as a record, right? Those labels are attesting to the fact that that product is appropriate for how you're using it and that the way you're using it is, is appropriate. Service records. So if you contract with someone, those service records count as 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 an official record for you. And then in invoices for products and services can also count as a record. Um, and so so there can be many different forms. It's just making sure that it's in particular when you're getting these records from someone else. Um, that they've got all the information on them that that your inspector, or your auditor is expecting to see. So here, this is a water analysis report, um, and so it shows that this, you know, this this lab has has many different certifications. It tells us the type of test that was done, and it gives us um, the the results here. So this is would be along with the cover sheet would be considered a complete record for a water system analysis. <clears throat> so we. We hear of issues, right, we, as I said earlier, with the readiness review survey results, right, incomplete records is an issue for, for farms across the board. Um, and most commonly, what, what the inspectors and regulators are saying is, is that they're not, they're not perfect because they don't have the name and location of the farm on the record commonly. And they haven't been signed off on by by management right and so that's where you know, got to close that circle make sure everything's on that record that needs to be there to satisfy these regulators. Um, but also that 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 final step of review from management is is there right that's completing the circle, so we want that na name and location of the farm prominent on on the form the actual values and observations during monitoring right so a, a checklist. Um, if it's just a checklist, wouldn't wouldn't be considered sufficient because there's no details given given there. Um, you know, space for if corrective actions took place, right? Then maybe corrective actions aren't always happening, and that's normal. Uh, but there should be pl a place there to indicate what the problem was and the corrective action. So how was that problem solved? Adequate description of commodity impacted and growing location. So this uh, field you know, what field, what's the field number or the field identifier for where this activity took place, right? Or if it's the packing house, right? If you indicate that, that location. So it's really clear that if you're looking at this record six months after the fact, you have a good picture of what was happening there. The date and time of the activity documented, and this again, do this at the time of the activity, uh, because you might, I run, I run into this issue all the time. I swear to myself, I'm going to remember this. I'm going to remember this. I don't need to write it down. And then I never remember it. So I'm trying to be better about writing it down. And then I end up with pieces of paper everywhere. Um, but really part of the training for people doing record keeping at the farm, they, it should just become habit, right? They're writing all of this information down at the time of the activity. And then they're not, they're not, relying on their memory after the fact to write the information down. The information needs to be accurate, legible, and indelible. So, you know, so it's not, you won't, we don't want pencil. We do it in pen. Digital records are, are fine also. Um, and just making sure that it's, it's going to look legitimate to whoever it is that's, that's going to uh, be reviewing it. 
It should be dated, signed, and initialed by the person completing the activity, and then reviewed, dated, and signed with the, within a reasonable amount of time by a supervisor or someone who's been delegated to, to review these records. So here are two examples of, of records. The one on the left is one of um, our, our uh, templates that we have available on our website. You could see it's got the farm name and address at the top. This is for the employee worker training. So we've got the date of the training, the topics that were covered, who, who gave the training, and then if any materials were used. And then there's space there for the employees to print their name, write down their, their job at the farm and the employee signature, and then the space at the bottom for management to, to review and sign off on that. Um, and so uh, these templates are available on our website um, and in Word format, so you can tweak these because what we have here might not be what you envision as a need for for your operation um, and so um, making sure that that you're updating these um, so it's specific to your farm is important because it should meet your needs um, and then you know if you if you're using our templates and that box says farm name farm address and you don't put that in there right it just it just kind of looks lazy to the to the auditor or the uh, inspector right they want it they want to see that you took the time to really look at what was on here and make it work for for your farm on the right it's we've all we've all seen these right the the cleaning records for for portable toilets and so the the auditor the inspector is just going to come in and look at the date on there and make sure it's it's in reasonable you know that it's clean in there and that it's been cleaned in within a reasonable amount of time um and and so that would suffice as as a cleaning record for for your portable toilet so an example of of a contracted service where you're relying on their record keeping to to satisfy uh audit standards so where should record keeping take place, right? The, the, the place we don't want to see record keeping take place is for all those records to be kept, to be take place in an office. If people have to leave the area that the activity is taking place in and walk to, into an office in order to, to write down information, there's, a, there's gonna be, you're gonna not have follow through as well as you would want in that situation. So really thinking about can can the record keeping happen with the person as they're doing the activity and and what's the easiest way for them to be able to to do that but certainly communicating with your employees who are completing those tasks and, and then expected to keep the records what do they want um, and what makes sense to them and that can really differ based on the person and so having that conversation is just it's just important to figure out a system that's going to work to make sure that those records are kept in the long run um, so paper records, if you're using that, right, we see lots of clipboards hung up in certain areas where activities take place. Usually there's a there's a pen hanging on a string from that clipboard. Um, and so that that's a really simple and appropriate way for record keeping to to take place. But we see more people using uh, their phones and tablets in the farm environments for for record keeping. And so that's that works, too. It's going to really depend on farm management's comfort level with that and ability to set that up, and then the worker's desire to be able to input uh, records that way. So some best practices for, for keeping records, right? So if you're, if you're using paper records or generating your own forms, um, you wanna standardize the format of your records as much as possible. So people know where they're gonna put their name, they know where they're gonna sign off at the bottom, Right, they know where to plug in information so that way it doesn't matter what activity they're doing things are generally in the same place across all the records it just makes it easier for people to complete the entire record when when they need to do that as i said earlier right training employees is really important but if you've got job descriptions for your employees including their record keeping responsibilities in those job description it just puts value to that aspect of their job um, and 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 adds that responsibility on to them. That's a that's a little bit more tangible than oh yeah you gotta you gotta keep this record, um, and 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 can be that that training can really be that opportunity to give the why behind and when the the more people look at that in terms of training people to do things or expecting people to do things, 
people just need to understand the why they're doing things in order to be able to more willingly follow through with it. Uh, so if you have workers that aren't following through with record keeping currently, think back to what have you done to explain that why to them and what can you do to um, to help better better inform them of the why and the importance of, of these records. And yeah, you, you'll you'll get people that that will just won't want to follow through and, and do it. But if you've done everything you can right to support them in that and explain that to them and give them the bigger picture. Um, hopefully you'll get most people to follow through with it. Um, it's also important to consider any record keeping changes um, when you change maybe the commodities that you grow, you, you purchase new equipment, or you fix or tweak existing equipment. All those things could impact the records that you're expected to have. A lot of those things can, uh, especially with new equipment or those fixes can happen mid-season. Um, oftentimes, bef right before you you have an audit or an inspection, um, and, and it can kind of catch you off guard. Um, if uh, right, if you haven't figured out, uh, you know the impacts of these changes that you've made, um, and then as the season goes through, as you've implemented maybe some changes to your record keeping, right? Communicate with your workers. How's it going for them? Is it? Is, did you? changes you made? Did it make life easier for them? Do they have ideas for how maybe this could be a little bit easier on them to, to do? Uh, but keeping that communication going, again, just reiterates to them that this is important to the operation um, and, and hopefully gets more buy-in from them to, to do it right. So um, we had one question come in about a link to the records and at the end i'm going to pull up the web pages and show everybody where the things that i'm referencing are online. So do I need copies of records for different audit questions or different agencies, we get this question a lot and no, if you are keeping a record already. You can use that that record across the board for for if you have an organic inspection an audit for FISMA uh, for DEP. The key is, is does it have, does the record have the information needed by each agency? And so when we list out what's required in these records, right, that's a minimum for the food safety requirements. So if you plan on using a food safety record that you're keeping for another agency, just make sure you you have all the information on that record that's appropriate for everyone who's going to be looking at it. It's okay if you have more information than uh, Department of Ag would want to see if they were coming out to do an audit, right? They'll, they'll focus on the information that they need. It's about having the minimum for everybody on there. And then second, you just need to be able to access it quickly uh, when you need it. So thinking about who's gonna need to see this, when are they typically at your operation? What's the most logical storage place for, for these records? Um, Another question we get is how long should you keep the records? So for the produce safety rule, it's two years past the date it was created. Um, for the produce safety rule qualified exemptions, the requirements is to keep your, your paperwork that backs up um, the, the form where you did your analysis to show that you are qualified exempt. You need to keep that for three years. And for third party audits, the expectation is to keep your records uh, that were involved with that third party audit for for two years. So in terms of storage of records right paper, where are you keeping these records once they're complete over a season that can be a lot of paper uh, that that's generated and if the expectation is just you're going to keep it for two years, are you going to have filing cabinets where where these records go. Uh, is your plan to turn them into PDFs, right, where they get scanned in um, and they're available digitally? Right? Just what makes the most to use these records in the future? And that's going to vary from, from farm to farm. If you do create electronic versions of all of your records, really think about who needs to have access to them. Um, with with a lot of of the uh, online clouds that are available now, you can you can give access privileges to whomever you want to, to records, and so there might be some sharing that you would want to do of of records just based on who's coming to the farm and would want to see these things, uh, because having only one person having access to it does put a burden on that person to be there in the time of of need. So really think about who else can can be helpful in that way. 
Um, and then what's your plan for reviewing your records for decision making? Is there a certain time of year that this makes sense? Who should be involved with that? Um, and maybe each year you focus on different areas that you would like to make improvements within your operation to, to use these records to, to help you. So that online document sharing, right, you can allow multiple users. If you choose to have record keeping online, if you have a farm operation where you've got, you know, internet access across the farm, whether it's phones, tablets, or, or computers, um, right, you can create living, living spreadsheets where, where different information is inputted uh, by different people in different areas of the farm throughout the day. And then you've, you know, somebody can be sitting in the office watching these spreadsheets being used. Um, and so that's something that that we've used on our end in extension as ways to work on projects to, together. Um, and if if everybody's on board with with the digital aspect at the farm and is comfortable with that, that can be a nice way to keep records uh, and make them really easily accessible to to people, no matter where they are on the farm. Uh, but cell service would play a role, right? The ability to have internet access on a phone in all areas of the farm, and that could be a limiting factor. Um, for, for some locations in, in the state. Um, and so today I'm going to focus on, on the Google suite of resources that are available online. Uh, but Microsoft OneDrive is, is available if you have a subscription to, to, to the Microsoft services. Uh, we also see Dropbox being used, which, is, which also is a subscription service. So when, when we go on to, to Google, um, and if you have a Google account, then you'll have access to all of these um, sort of services on the website. And so in the top right corner, you could you see a box, a box of dots. And if you click on that box of dots, right, so you see it a little bit better, um, it'll open up and, and show you these icons for all different tools that um, that are available within Google. And you can scroll down. There's There are many, many types of things that you can use. I've only used a couple of them. Uh, but again, you just have to have a, a Google account. Usually a Gmail account gets you a Google account and that gives you access to, to these things. So when you click on Drive, and that's the, the triangle um, right here, that's the triangle icon. When you click on Drive, it'll, if you've never used it before, this this page will be empty, and it'll ask you if you want to. Um, if you click on the the new, you can upload documents that you've already created in here. You can create folders, um, and so I think for most farms that chose to use this, you'd want to create a folder for your for your farm records, and that's that's what I did within my drive for for these purposes. So if I were to click on this this farm records it would take me into all the things I had uploaded in, into, into that folder. And so um, for this, I just, I had created an Excel spreadsheet that I uploaded into, into the Google um, Drive. And so this is, this is water sources. So on this particular farm, it was three wells and an irrigation pond. And I was tracking in this spreadsheet the, the annual assessment of, of each of these things. And you can see I've got the date, I've got the activities that took place. So well turned on, there were no issues, the pressure was good. Corrective actions removed weeds from around the wellhead. Um, and then any document that you upload into Google Drive it Google automatically creates a link to that. So you can embed into a master sheet all these things that you've uploaded into your drive. So in this case, I uploaded the water testing report, and then I just dropped the link for that water testing report um, into, into the drive. And then you could see initials of persons responsible. So this is just one example of how you could use Excel uh, to just track basic activities that are happening at the farm. During an audit or an inspection, you could just pull this open on, on a tablet or the computer and, and then be able to click on that, that link as long as you had internet access. And then it would pull up the, the water testing report for, for the regulator to, to see. And so this was, this was something that I just started playing around with because I knew others had been using it. At the end, I do have a guidance document on how to use 
um, some Google, um, some of their, their programs to be able to help with record keeping on, on the farm. So there's more info for that. I also wanted to point out that there are Google Forms um, that, that can be used. And basically, a Google Form is sort of like a survey. So you've all been through extension trainings. You've all been bombarded with the surveys that we give you. And so you would be creating a survey for each record keeping activity that you would be doing at the farm where it would make sense. So this is, I would think a survey would make the most sense for farms where this is an activity that happens on a more frequent basis, not, not a survey for something like your annual food safety plan review. And so you just have to create questions. It is pretty simple to use to create the survey. Um, input questions that are specific. So you could see here, I've got name, date, field name, harvest crew, crops to be harvested. Um, and additionally, I had put on here, right, where, where hand washing stations available, was restroom available, were the harvest containers appropriate for use, um, were, the, were the harvesting tools, in, you know, were they appropriate for use, a space for corrective actions, um, and, then, and then a place for, for review. And so by having that date on there, um, then, then what happens is, is once, once you're the person who's responsible for doing that pre-harvest risk assessment, once they fill this survey out, out in the field and they hit complete, then it's, then it's saved within, within the Google Forms. And so you can, you can go into to this heading within your Google Forms and look at the responses for each, each day. And you can create a PDF of the results of each one of these surveys. You can print them out. Um, and so if you think your workers might be interested in completing a survey rather than having a clipboard in the truck or, or vehicle with them when they go out into the field, this is a pretty simple and free way to, to try out doing online um, entry of, of, of records out in the field. And it, so it works on phones and tablets and, and, and computers and was pretty easy to, to set up and I would think be pretty easy to, to use. In the field, so I'd be interested if any. If I don't know of any farms that are using this right now, but if anybody is using it, how that's going, um, or if you decide to try it out, how how that goes. Um, we do see more and more um, record keeping software becoming available to to farms, um, and so really the considerations that we see the biggest issue is, is most software is built for large scale operations and thinking about traceability. And, um, and so finding software that's appropriate for diversified farms or farms that are growing many crops, um, that seems to be harder to, to find. So before you sink any money into to purchasing record keeping software for the farm, really try to do a test run of it and see if it, it makes sense logistically for your operation. The other issue is cost. Some of these, it's gonna be several thousand dollars um, just a year as an initial fee. And then there's always lots of add-ons um, for additional things that you might need to, to keep records of and track on your farm. Ease of use, the cheaper ones tend to be clunkier and, and harder to use. Um, and we do see more and more multi-language support uh, coming through with the software. So recognizing that, that people that are using the software might not always be English as a first language. Um, and Spanish seems to be the most common language that, uh, as that multi-language. Another consideration is, is what accounting software are you using at the farm and would this software work with that? You really would want your accounting software like QuickBooks or other to, to really work with this, this other software that you're, that you're bringing in. Um, and then thinking about, you know, does it work on a phone? And is, if you don't have internet access at some parts of the farm, would, would this be, you know, off network friendly? So would it save information and then upload it once you've got internet, internet access on that device? Um, so these are just some of the software options that are that are out there. The University of Vermont back in 2017 took a as close a look as they could um, to to these softwares to see how they would work for for farms in Vermont, right? So more diversified, smaller acreage, a mix of direct market and wholesale. 
and none of them really seemed like a good fit for for what those farms needed i do have a link at the end for the write-up from this from that particular project and a number of these have have changed what's available within their software since 2017 i can't believe that was four years ago um but these are these would be starting places to to look at uh, in terms of software if you're interested in in heading that direction and there is um, a nice write-up in that uvm project summary so when we think about those common record keeping areas uh the areas that we see uh, most commonly are worker health and hygiene, soil amendments, pre-harvest risk assessments, cleaning and sanitation of food contact surfaces, water testing, chemical applications at the farm, post-harvest uh, cleaning and, and sanitation, and then the, the food safety plan. But really, record keeping is going to be different based on every, every farm and, and what they're doing. And so record keeping is... is it, Right, there might be records that you don't have to keep because you're not doing a certain activity at your farm. Um, and so thinking about all the things that make your farm unique, right? All of that's gonna have an impact on, on the records that you keep. So really thinking about the big picture of your operation, thinking about all the inputs that you have, the layout of your field locations, um, contracted services that you have, the, the employees that you have, um, all these different things, right? Your post-harvest activities, all those things are gonna play a role. And sometimes taking that step back and looking at looking at your farm from above and thinking about all of that in terms of determining what, what record keeping needs to take place. So when we focus on the FSMA produce safety rule and its required records, there's up to seven records if you needed to be fully compliant with the rule that that you would need to keep and and I do have a resource at the end that's specific to this. Uh, so that personnel qualifications and training that water system inspection water treatment monitoring agricultural water die off corrective action agricultural water right? you see all those waters are, are pending um, we keep we keep being told we're going to get more information on the water aspects of FSMA. Um, and we we are still waiting, uh, but it's supposed to be coming and then we can offer more guidance on that. But we do have templates for, for all of these available also. Biological soil amendments of, of animal origin, right? So we're really thinking about composting and handling of, of manures on farms. Equipment, tools, buildings, and sanitation, right? This is specific to, to the cleaning and sanitation process. And then qualified exemption. So if you meet that criteria as qualified exempt from the rule, you are required to keep a record that um, that shows that and we have a, a template for that also. Um, and so yeah, that's what some of these templates look like. Also, um, there's certificate of compliance is something that we talk about. And so that's when you're buying in things from others, right? So drinking water, uh, hand washing water that's that's coming in with rented equipment and, um, and you know if you're buying compost right so you would want to have a, a, a certificate of of conformance to show that what you're buying in meets the standards of the rule and so there's there's information available on what that what that would look like uh, certainly if you're buying ice also right we want to see the water records for that so thinking beyond what you have control over and thinking too about those inputs that you're purchasing and making sure that that you've got the records to support um, the, the quality of all of that also when it comes to the usda harmonized audit i ran out of space here writing down all the records that you might potentially need to keep it's over 60 records if you were needed to fully comply with all three sections of the rule so you could see there's a big difference between the expectations of record keeping for fisma compared to the harmonized audit um, and so you've really got to you really got to be on top of your game in terms of record keeping if you're going through the audit but that's that much more time you have to spend into developing those records, training the workers to do it correctly, and then reviewing those records. You've got that much more information to make decisions at your farm. That's the upside of it. I'm trying to be positive about all those records. So I've mentioned, right? Oh, my watch is talking to me again. Um, 
So I had mentioned earlier, right, we've got templates available online for FISMA. The Produce Safety Alliance has created templates, but it's really important to, to see these templates as a starting point, right? We're giving you inspiration to, to create a record that is going to be useful to you as well as meet the expectations that regulators are going to have um, for you. So really look at what are what's on these templates but think beyond that what else do you need on there what needs tweaking to really fit the needs of of your farm um so ongoing management of of records is important we don't want to think okay i've made decisions about these records and now i'm going to let everybody else worry about it and not think about it right so so reviewing them which is going to be an important part of doing a mock audit an important part of reviewing your food safety plan annually, um, right? Make sure you're considering your records and paying attention to, to how they're working and having those conversations with, with employees that are responsible for, for the records. Um, and then just be prepared to make changes, to, to continually tweak them uh, because your farm is gonna continually evolve and that means your records are as well. So here we are with, with some of our resources. We've got the, um, the on-farm food safety website, which I'll bring up, is our is our first place. And if you go if you go to our homepage here, if you just Google on-farm food safety Rutgers, this this is the website that will pop up. Um, and you'll see we've got tabs here on the left. If you click on third-party audits, access publications and you scroll down this is where we have all the information for third party audits all these all of these support uh, documents and, and information and so here under gap logs you'll see we've got a long list of of record keeping tools that um that you could use so i'm going to open up animal monitoring you can see it's in word so you're able to take things out add things in make sure you're saving this in, in into your own system and it's processing. And so here, here you go. See what's missing on these, and we've got to update them on our end, is that box for your farm name and address. That is really important, and lots of farms are getting dinged um, in, with not having that. But you can, you can, you can mess with this as much as, as much as you want once you're there. So, so think, you know, not all of these logs might apply to your operation, um so use what you need and then if we're missing something or you have inspiration for something else let us know um then with this is the produce safety alliance um and they have a lot of resources for the produce safety rule so if you click here on resources then click on the general resource listing it'll take you to this page and if you scroll down you'll see there's that record keeping tab and so they have templates of records in word format as well as just above that is information about record keeping compliance with with the rule. Surface is slow today. Um, and so you just scroll on down through and um, and all the records are here that you could need. Right. And so depending on your activities, that'll play a role in which which one of these records is um, is what you need for for your operation. Um, so what I'll do is um, I'm going to put put these links in the chat box. We've got the, the University of Vermont study that was looking at software. There's also a helpful resource here um, for farms that are certified organic and uh, need to comply with the produce safety rule, a comparison of records and, and how to make it work for both. Uh, and then M Michigan State had a nice uh, little information sheet on, on digital record keeping with, with Google Docs. Um, so hopefully that, that gave you some ideas. Um, are you putting those all up there, Jim? Uh, hopefully that gave you some ideas with on. record keeping. Any questions?
Hi, can you hear me? It's Barbara yep. Stella. Hi, how um, are you? Good, good, thanks. Hey, um, what, so what would be, um, every year I, I give the guys, and it's in Spanish, uh, the pesticide training off the um, internet mm -hmm. that I found on YouTube that was pretty good from one of the colleges. And then the food safety, I have this in Spanish. It's like a flip book with about 35 pages. Yep. And we read it in Spanish. And then if they have any questions, we answer it. Are they still usable and okay for the training? They they are, um, but but none of those really talk about uh, the record keeping requirements, right? And and so right, that's going to be different for every farm as as to what they expect their workers to do and and what records need to be kept. So those are really great starting places yeah, for, okay. for training. Yep, and then you would just want to supplement. Um, anything else that's that's uh, relevant to them for their work right okay all right yep. good. thank you yeah sure thing thanks for chiming in or yeah thanks for chiming in <laughs> any other questions well this 